Okay, so firstly, it's important to understand users because they are the people that we're designing for. It's really easy as a designer to um, be presented with a situation and um, bring our own frame of reference and our own assumptions and biases to that and design something that we like, but um, that's actually not useful if it's not what our customers or our users want or need. So it's always really important to understand who our users are, um, what motivates them, what do they care about, what's going on for them. So then we can design um, the actual service or system that they uh, want to use and will use and will um, bring the most value into their life. We use a lot of different tools to understand our users and um, we use a lot of research techniques. So in particular, we'll use interviews or observation. Um, we also run a lot of workshops where we create specific activities that um, allow us to have uh, facilitated conversations with some of our users um, and then draw out the information that we need from them. We also use things like journey maps um, where we understand a customer's current or ideal um, journey that they would like to experience when they use a product or a service or system. And uh, we often use personas as well as a way of modeling our users so that we can um, understand them more and have a profile for the people that we're designing for. We use personas in design to understand our users in a different way. Sometimes we don't always have uh, direct access to them. So if we have personas that are already in existence, we can use those to help us um, understand how our customers might use a product or a system or a service. Um, it's not ideal though, because we have to be very careful in terms of uh, removing our own biases and our own assumptions from that situation and trying to embody as much as possible the persona that we're using and trying to understand for the purpose of designing. We would advocate that we never ever only use personas to design from. Um, it's really important that you get first-hand uh, validation or research from your customers um, so that you can make sure that you're really designing the right thing. So we either use personas upfront in the design process and design a product for them and then we'll go and test that with real customers or um, vice versa we could um, use real customer research and then um, use a persona as a way that we can test that solution and um, see how we might think it might work for that persona. Most personas are, well most good personas that is, are developed based on rigorous research. Um, they really go beyond market research um, which is primarily focused on you know demographics and statistics and um, segmentation of the market so it, it's more about um, how old are you, what gender are you, um, where do you live, what's your socioeconomic status, that sort of thing. Uh, whereas in design the personas that we have um, we create um, using a whole bunch of customer research and as well as having all of that information we also include much more of a story like who is this person and include the background around um, what's their life context, um, you know, are they married, do they, um, what do they do as a job and how do they go about doing their job. Uh, but even more than that, we go beyond that to understand, well, what behaviours do they have and what motivates them in their world and what do they aspire to be like, um, what do they value. So um, it's more than just that surface demographic information, but getting beneath that and understanding, well, who is this person and what's their psychology behind how they are and how they be in the world. Um, while we create personas based on research, sometimes they can be just a really useful tool to use um, in a workshop where you can create your own persona um, based on the situation that you're trying to design for, and it just provides a different viewpoint that you can try and understand the situation from. So um, while you know we advocate for good personas with rigorous research, um, they're really necessary, that's really necessary if you're going to try and disseminate it across a whole organisation. But in terms of um, just to connect with and demonstrate empathy for a customer, then necessarily you can just design one and um, kind of use it as an example. Okay, so I talked about empathy and empathy is really key to everything in design. Um, and it comes back to that uh, notion of why it's important to understand our users to begin with. We need to understand what is the context that our customer is in, what matters to them, what's going on for them, why are they trying to achieve the things that they're trying to achieve and um, 
and demonstrate empathy for them. So then we can design products and systems and services that um, meet those needs and are the things that will be relevant to them in their lives and that they will use. Um, and empathy is about being in service of. So it's really about understanding that when we're designing, it's not about us. Uh, it's, it's really all about the people that we're designing for. And so the better that we can understand them and um, the more that we can connect with them um, and demonstrate empathy for them, the necessarily the better and more appropriate the um, service or system that we're designing will be. When I talk about empathy, the key thing to empathy is really around um, perspective taking, understanding where someone is coming from, um, understanding that their perspective is going to be different from your own. Everyone has their own reality and sees the world from their own truth. Um, and, and that's not wrong. So it's really important that we understand how they view the world and what matters for them um, so that we can design what's right for them. Okay, guys, well, I hope that was useful. Uh, it's been really great talking to you and um, good luck.